Today's rant is brought to you by the word lawfare. Lawfare is a legal action undertaken on part of a hostile campaign against a country or group. In this case, it's taken place by using government authority to harass and intimidate other people. There's a few issues I want to cover. Number one is accreditation. So on January 4th, uh, I believe the NIC, whoever's left that Banducci hasn't frightened off, the staff responded. And I'm sure McKinsey had his fingers in there too. They responded to the complaint. There were a lot of issues raised and kind of addressed and things that they said they were doing. And it was just a terrible, terrible read almost like this guy wrote it. Anyway, the one item that stuck out to me the most was this. Immediately reinstate the president. They didn't. Instead, they hired the crony, the other guy, the interim president. So even though, if you look at it, there's a lot of text here, they really didn't reinstate the president. This just looks like an excuse. The dog ate my homework. You know, they cause their own problems. And they prove once again that those, these extremists, these purity Republicans, they can win an election, but they're incompetent boobs when it comes to governing. The second item dovetails from the president's lawsuit. President Swain is suing NIC because the trustees illegally fired him. They put him on administrative leave, boneheaded move, another uh, crack in the wall of accreditation. Article in the Coeur d'Alene Press on January 7th, this item here. NIC attorney subpoenas employees, former trustees. This is really unheard of. Normally in an organization, in a government organization, you just ask for something. You don't have to subpoena people, um, but he did. And this is the quote from former Coeur d'Alene attorney Mike Gridley. I can't imagine a scenario where I would subpoena our own employees unless I was making $325 an hour. <laughs> Gridley said, referring to Macomer's exorbitant hourly fee, $125 higher than the prior attorneys. But he was a crony, and he donated to all the Republicans. And that's how he got appointed. That's called corruption, boys and girls. An employer issuing subpoenas to current employees could be an intimidation tactic. <laughs> you think? Yeah, according to the list of people, they're intimidating. So let's do some crooked Macomer math here. He's passed out 15 subpoenas. That's two hours deposition each or processing time. Just that's the minimum at $325 an hour. 15 times 2 times 325 equals. So Macomer's going to rack up an additional $10,000 for his efforts here. And he gets to harass people. In the opinion page today, you see this article here from trusty emeritus Christy Wood, who writes, the subpoenas appear to be a fishing expedition to hopefully find an email conversation that leads them to declaring an errant hiring of Dr. Swain. Your focus is on terrorizing college employees. On your long subpoena list is the female employee who was physically assaulted by Todd Banducci. Banducci later signed a settlement agreement with that employee. And who would expect gentle, kind, conservative Todd Banducci to assault a woman? Well, I would. That's his behavior. The guy's a thug, and he's ruining the college. And it amazes me that there are still bozos out there who suck on the local Republican Central Committee teat who say, oh, this is nothing. It's overblown. It's not, accreditation's not at risk. Nothing's wrong with the college. These clowns, hey, trust me, people are taking screenshots. Christy goes on to say, let's be clear, Art, that if you show up with a subpoena at my door, you will need to have the witness fee with it as it's required by Idaho Code. I will promptly donate that fee to Nick Swain's Legal Defense Fund. Here's the Idaho Code she refers to. Every witness who provides testimony pursuant to a subpoena provided for in this chapter is entitled to receive the witness fees as allowed under Idaho Rules of Civil Procedure. And I said witch hunt because that's exactly what this is. See, Banducci is terrified that the details about his assault of a woman are going to be made public. I believe that's why Macomer originally tried to get documents from the former attorney, Mark Lyons. I believe that's why they want to have this special employee to work for the trustees who's going to go ahead and ferret out all the, the different emails and documents because he wants that information destroyed. He doesn't like the fact that he is a bully and that he's being called a bully and that people point out the fact that he assaulted a woman. This is the witch hunt. You have Banducci, 
McKinsey, McElmer, in the background cheering them on are the clowns at the Kootenay County Republican Central Committee. And down there on the floor are the NIC employees. They are assaulting and beating up and harassing, along with the students and the parents and the taxpayers who are paying for all this stuff. And here's the latest thing, which was just made public today, but the letter is dated January 5th. This is from the STEM Charter Academy. And let's cut to the chase. With recent abrupt changes in leadership, incomprehensible financial decisions, and imminent loss of accreditation at North Idaho College, we must seek opportunities with institutions that offer our students and faculty peace of mind and protect the credibility of their hard work. Toward that end, we have arranged for dual credit courses that are scheduled to be taught this spring on our campus at the University of Idaho. We respectfully request that the late start sections of various courses be canceled. We will be seeking ways to partner with other institutions and scale back classes that have typically been offered to students via NIC in the future until such time as the college appears to be stable. Without NIC, this area is going to suffer. Not only are we going to lose the jobs and the educational opportunity, but businesses seeking to relocate to the area will see that there is a college that failed. Even worse for these clowns is that you have the first college on the West Coast to lose accreditation, the first public institution. You don't think the national media is going to come knocking on some doors here? And when the, the typical GOP, local GOP response, the wacko response is to ignore them, you don't think they're going to dig in deeper? This is going to be ugly, and it's not going to end pretty. And the sad part is it's going to take us a generation to recover.